Hey everyone, my name is Keith Williams and I'm the perennials buyer at Bachman's. Um, we have a lot of really exciting things in the perennials department this year, but today I'm going to talk to you about perennial ferns and shade plants. When we get into the heat of summer, what's nicer than a cool breeze, a nice shady spot to hang out and relax? And really the best way to achieve that in your garden is with some specialty ferns, some plants that are specifically tailored to the shade and will really thrive there. This is particularly important if you live in the city where maybe you have a shaded yard and you struggle with plants that uh, enjoy full sun. Now, specifically what I'm going to talk to you about in this little clip are three main things. Uh, the first is going to be the, some of the new perennial ferns that we brought in for shade here at Bachman's this year. Second, I'm going to talk a little bit about shade grasses. If you have a shady spot, a shady garden, but you want to introduce some texture from grasses, uh, what your options might be. And then lastly, I'm just going to cover some um, kind of one-off, some special perennials for shade that we brought in this year that are new that we're excited about. So to jump right into it, ferns are great for shade. Uh, a lot of people know that. I think you see uh, cinnamon ferns, ostrich ferns very commonly in gardens. Those are classics. They're great for shade. We have plenty of those here. Um, as you can see, we typically are selling these in number one containers. They're well-established plants that will uh, really take root in your garden and flourish in shady spots. Now what's unique about this year is we've brought in a number of other ferns that we haven't seen here before. Uh, some of these are uh, really unique, mostly because they have different foliage textures. So a good example of that is this um, holly fern. So if you can see this, holly fern has a much more kind of uh, thicker leaf blade. It's much more akin to what you would see in a tropical fern um, and very, very kind of evocative of like the Pacific Northwest of, of rainforests and very kind of lush tropical areas. In addition to that, we have a really fantastic native fern, a uh, heart's tongue fern. This is called an asplenium, and if you look at it, this is totally different than an ostrich fern or cinnamon fern or anything you might have seen in a garden around here. Now, what's really interesting about these is in addition to being kind of a cool new texture for your garden, these are native plants and they're actually kind of threatened where they exist along the Great Lakes region. Um, there's a number of native insects that rely on these as a food source, so it's really cool to be able to bring something into your shade garden that not only looks interesting, has that texture you want, but is actually a native plant and actually kind of helps support the um, existing ecosystems around the Twin Cities and the Upper Midwest. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, in addition to these new ferns, we're also bringing in ferns in new formats. Like I said, we typically have ostrich ferns, cinnamon ferns, and many of these things in number one gallon uh, containers, what you might normally see. We also have these in smaller four inch containers this year. These are a lower price point, so what this means is if you're looking to do a larger planting in the shade, if you're really trying to create a drift effect with ferns, you can buy these smaller format plants to help establish that. They will take a little bit more time to get to full size, but it's a great option for those of you that are looking for a lot of ferns or have a large shady space to deal with. Uh, the last thing I want to mention about ferns, uh, now that we've covered some totally new species uh, that we haven't offered here before, as well as some different formats we're working with, is one really cool hybrid that we're growing at the farm uh, here at Bachman's. This fern is called Godzilla. Okay, Godzilla is a hybrid fern. So it's really a cross between uh, a lady fern and an ostrich fern, I believe. And what that means is it has a lot of hybrid vigor. So although this plant looks relatively normal in this container, these things will get to 36 inches tall when full grown. So if you're looking for mass, maybe if you like large leaved things like hostas in the shade, this is really a formidable fern. When they're established, they'll be big, they'll be bold, people will notice it, and it will definitely stand up to Empress Wu, some of the larger hostas that you see in shade gardens. So pretty excited about that as well. With that, we're gonna move on from ferns and talk about shade grasses. Uh, one of the most common questions we get in the perennials department is, I have a shady area, I want grasses, what can I do? Uh, admittedly, it's very difficult to work with grasses in the shade. Many of them come from open prairies and ecosystems that are bright, sunny, lots of heat. But you do have options for grasses. Uh, one of the most popular that you've seen maybe around is the Japanese forest grass, Hakon grass. This is uh, all gold. It's one of the more common cultivars. It's really bright, so this will stand out in the shade. 
But uh, one of the interesting things is that in addition to this, we've brought in a new Hakone cultivar this year for Bachmann's, uh, which is striped. So this is Aureola. Um, I'm not sure if I'm nailing the pronunciation on that because it's new to me too, but it's a really lovely variegated striped grass that'll do shade to part shade. Now I do want to mention with Hakone grasses, they are a little bit more cold sensitive. So you just want to put them in a more protected area. They are technically zone five. Uh, so when you get those, just be aware of your microclimate in your garden, tend to plant them towards walls or on south facing slopes and they'll, they'll do a lot better than if you put them in a very exposed, very cold spot. One of the other things that you can do for grasses in the shade are sedges. Now there's a number of sedge cultivars we offer here. There's new ones we brought in this year. This is a really fantastic one called Everglow. And if you can see this up close, it has this wonderful gold margin. Now these are sort of our largest sedge that we brought in for this beginning of summer planting season. Um, we also have a number of smaller format sedges that just get a variety of textures and colors. So if you're looking for, again, a grass in a shady area, these are four different sedges that we've brought in. These are your best bet for trying to plant something soft and grass-like in the shade. So finally, the last thing I want to talk about are some of the new unique uh, perennials that we brought in, which are not necessarily part of a larger category, but just really kind of different cultivars that we're excited about for shade gardens, part shade, that would do well and kind of provide a mix of things outside of the typical hosta or what you might see in a shade garden. The first that I want to talk about are hellbores. Hellbores, if you're unfamiliar with them, are a very interesting plant. Uh, they they're called Christmas rose, Lenten rose, and they actually bloom during very early spring, very late winter. So I have a neighbor with a deep shade yard. They have these interplanted with some of their shade ground covers, and they really bloom as soon as the snow melts. You'll see flowers come up. Now we have a couple different cultivars we brought in this year. They're not typically flowering right now, so you'll have to use your imagination on some of them, but they, they go uh, in color and sort of flower style from these kind of like dusky earth tones through uh, more brighter striking deep deep purples things like that and the other thing that's really nice about hellbores is they have this fantastic foliage so they have this nice kind of palmate leaf many of the cultivars will have sort of streaking on them kind of like lizard skin looking um, texture to them so just really fantastic for the shade uh, one of the other things that we've brought in specifically for shade is a kind of a riff on a favorite of the shade garden many of you may know coral bells you may have hookah in your garden we have one called mega caramel this is another product we're growing at the farm at Bachman's um, as you can see this this is quite big just in the container as it is. When these are established, they'll form a really large mound. The first time I saw one of these that was grown in, mature, uh, I, I stopped in my tracks because I had not seen a, a coral bell uh, that size. So again, it's kind of an impressive thing. Obviously in the shade, we're leaning very heavily on uh, leaf, color, foliage, texture for interest. Um, this does this uh, in a lot of very effective ways. So we really like Mega Caramel. We also have some new shade natives. Uh, this year we've brought in Mayapple. Many of you, if you've been out in the woods in the spring, you'll recognize this. It's a really neat kind of umbrella shaped um, leaf. They grow like this, uh, just single leaves, and will spread in a mat. So they make a nice ground cover in the shade. Early in the season they get a flower and they will actually get a little fruit. Uh, the name is Mayapple because in May they'll start to form these little apples. This one didn't bloom for us. Um, since it's in a container and not established, but really fantastic uh, native theme for the shade. And the last thing I, I just want to mention is uh, some classics that uh, are showing up and looking really nice this year. We do have Ligularia. Uh, these are, again, another big, bold foliage type plant. If you can see the size of the leaf, um, it's much bigger than in my hand. This one is Desdemona. We have several Ligularia uh, in stock at all our locations. 
Again, something just to kind of mix in with your hosta. The stock we've been seeing of Ligularia this year, I don't know if it's because of the mild winter we had or what, but they're just looking really great this year. So they're, the quality on these is out of the park. Um, and one final note, you can have blooms in the shade. I've been talking about uh, a lot of foliage, which is important, but we do have classics like Columbine that can do part shade to shade, and they will bloom. They'll be covered with blooms. Many of them are these kind of red and purple tones, which can play quite nicely with the purples that you see in many shade foliage plants. We also have a really good crop of monk's hood in this year. Now this isn't blooming, but monk's hood, if you've never seen it, is kind of a taller perennial. They'll get these spikes of really kind of vibrant purple deep blue flowers. Uh, I do want to mention monkshood is a toxic plant, so you want to keep it away from pets and children, but if you're looking for kind of a nice rich color, something that blooms in the shade, monkshood is a really good plant to work with. So with that, I want to thank you for taking some time to listen to me talk about the new perennials we have here at Bachman's for the shade. I hope that you'll consider bringing in some of these newer, more interesting, different ferns we have. Uh, they can really mix up the shade garden and create a very nice lush feel for your garden and yard this summer.